Mr. President, this morning, Donald Trump tweeted that, and I quote, Democrats are holding our military hostage in this shutdown. Just the latest in a string of recent comments where he accuses Democrats like me for not caring about our military. And it's the latest example of him failing to show leadership to take responsibility for leading this nation. Does he even know that there are service members who are in harm's way right now watching him, looking for their commander in chief to show leadership rather than to try to reflect, deflect blame? Or that his own Pentagon says that there are short term funding plans, that the short term funding plans that he seems intent on pushing is actually harmful to not just the military, but to our national security? I spent my entire adult life looking out for the well-being, the training, the equipping of the troops for whom I was responsible. Sadly, this is something the current occupant of the Oval Office does not seem to care to do. And I will not be lectured about what our military needs by a five deferment draft dodger. And I have a message for Cadet Bone Spurs. If you cared about our military, you'd stop baiting Kim Jong-un into a war that could put 85,000 American troops and millions of innocent civilians in danger. Last night, after the lights had been turned out in the White House and the president had gone to his private quarters, I voted to better train and equip our troops to stop wasting the taxpayers' dollars with yet another CR. I voted to make sure that our military men and women who are standing in line on the DMZ, who are in Iraq and Afghanistan, across Africa, in Asia, get the help, the support, and the equipment that they need. If the president truly cared about them, then he would stop, behind, stop hiding behind his Twitter account, stop blaming everyone else. And he can tell his party, a party that controls the House, the White House, and the Senate, to do their job, to govern, to stop allowing the most extreme wing of your party to prevent us from passing a long-term funding solution that the military itself, your own leaders that you nominated and appointed, is asking for. At the very least, you could ask your party to guarantee military pay and death benefits for our service members and their families so that the troops downrange aren't putting their lives at risk overseas while also worrying about whether they're going to be able to feed their families or if our government will take care of those families. If God forbid, they must make that last full devo measure of devotion for our nation. I am so disappointed that my Republican colleagues refused to allow us a vote for our troops last night. And I encourage them to please reconsider that vote. Let's get to a full budget. Let's move on. We can compromise. We can do this together. So many of the options on the table are bipartisan. In fact, a majority of them are Republican authored. Our troops know how to work together. They stand shoulder to shoulder when they protect and defend this country. We surely in these chambers can do the same. So let's stop blaming each other and let's get to work. I will be here as I was today and tomorrow and the day after until we get this done. Our men and women in uniform deserve nothing less. Thank you.